Okay, I'm using the six inch uh, sky watcher refractor. It's a achromat and it's 15 centimeter objective lens size. It's elegant. The purity of the image is amazing. Okay, I use this uh, telescope to look at the uh, Orion belt region. I could see the Orion nebula. The lens is very good, 15 centimeter of the lens objective lens a doublet is well baffled also inside the tube so a stray light uh, from external sources cannot really bother you too much uh, at the same time uh, i was looking at the sigma orionis the eight uh, star system just down the orion belt omega on the diagonal i was using and the 50 millimeter celestron silver top plus all eyepiece that's amazing eyepiece for looking at this object Really nice, nicely framed. The two brighter members of the low triplet, those M65 and M66, they're very clear and visible. The other NGC one is a little bit fainter, but I'm surprised that's very well visible. You can see it. I am now looking at the M51 and its companion through this uh, 6 inch refractor skull watcher and it's beautiful, <laughs> it's big this uh, 50 millimeter Celestron Plusle actually has a very wide field of view and yet the galaxy is so big it takes almost one fourth of the field of view one fifth I should say, yes it's very visible extended object, brighter than the, any member in the Lowe's triplet. Now I'm using the Sky Watcher 28mm multi coated uh, 2 inch tele uh, eyepiece, and I can see the NGC neighbor of the M51 also close to it. They're all surrounded with, yeah, with a halo around them. It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful scenes I've seen. This is a good eyepiece also. 28mm is the optimum. Um, maybe I will get the Sky Watcher later. Sky Watcher um, 82 degrees also. Nirvana. It's, it's all sold. You cannot find it. Anybody who bought it, <laughs> just lucky. It's one fifth of the price. Oh, no. One third of the price of a. Uh, Teleview uh, Nagler 31 millimeter tape 5 and yet it delivers as good as that and a little bit even better because 25 uh, 28 millimeter is 3 millimeter less and gives a darker contrastier background Wow I have now decreased the focal length of the eyepiece from 28 to 14 half magnification doubled I can see clearly both of the N um, M51 and his companion clearly I can see the halo uh, uh, shadow of the halo of the spiral arms of the M51 going toward the uh, companion this view with this 6 inch telescope is very similar to what I could see with the 12 inch telescope. <laughs> it punches above its weight. This is equal to double its aperture in the Newtonian. <laughs> it's a refractor. <laughs> Okay, I just want to show you, this is the 28mm again, Sky Watcher eyepiece. The eyepiece that comes standard with the larger refractors and reflectors of the Sky Watcher. And the setting is this. Bright street light. And it's despite that, I can see the Crab Nebula M1. <laughs> with this is so the sky is so bright almost orange but I can't with this see the M1 
I found the Zeta Tauris and M1 was just there. <laughs> so beautiful. And I'm using the Skywatcher Nirvana 16 millimeter, 82 degrees, looking at M1. Uh, the details, uh, the base and the slight filaments I can see in the Crab Nebula. This is a supernova remnant at the center of it is a neutron star, of course invisible to us at this magnitude. As magnitude 16, I think. Yet, I can see details that I only could see in a, a reflector, Newtonian, Dobsonian, uh, twice the size of this 6 inch uh, refractor telescope. So, this 6 inch shows me the details I could see with the, <laughs> the 12 inch reflector. <laughs> it's so elegant. And now I'm looking at the M35 star cluster, open star cluster in the Gemini and the NGC star cluster beside it. Probably is one of the best views of, I had of this cluster. Mm, yeah, probably the best. I can, I can compare it slightly with the 12 inch reflector, the Sonia reflector view, but this one is a little bit sharper. And this sky background is darker and more beautiful. 